My name is Tim Baco. I'm Dagrat Feist. My name is uh, Ansgar Dietrichs. On Ethereum, we always have these regular upgrades, hard forks, once or twice a year. And the next one we're planning, funny enough, it's called Denap slash Cancun now, often called Dancun, because we have two chains in one now after the merge, the kind of CL side, the EL side, and they have separate names for their forks. So now basically we always have these interesting <laughs> fork names. But so basically it's just, you know, a regular upgrade and brings the latest features that are basically ready for Ethereum. Um, and really kind of the headlining feature, I would say, is ERP4844, where we, we, we try to basically make Ethereum more attractive for rollups. The main part of the Denkun upgrade is going to be EAP4844, which has also been named Proto Denk Sharding, which is an upgrade that introduces blob space to Ethereum. This is a pure data availability space where rollups can post their data that they need in order to gain their security. And what it does is it separates economically this data from the transactions on the Ethereum L1 so that they don't have to compete with all the execution that's already happening anymore. So this will hopefully make it make rollups much cheaper in the short term, but in addition gives us all the cryptographic updates that are needed in order to in the future scale data availability and add data availability sampling, which will be one of the major upgrades that make Ethereum scalable. On Ethereum today, there's a very limited amount of transactions that can take place within a block. So when a lot of people want to make transactions all at the same time, the price to make a transaction goes up and this prices out a ton of use cases. So if you want to buy something that costs $100 on Ethereum, uh, but the transaction fees are $50, obviously that's not economical. So over the past couple of years, we've seen the rise of these layer two solutions, which are effectively different places where transactions can happen that are anchored back to Ethereum and inherit the security of Ethereum. So this is a way where we can move more and more of the transaction activity off the main Ethereum network, which sort of decongests it and then offer lower cost to users. The biggest thing that these layer two need is somewhere to store data. So the reason why they're secure is because they take all the data from their transactions, they compress it and they put a proof of that on Ethereum layer one. So we always know on the main Ethereum chain, you know, what happened on those layer twos. So the Denkun upgrades is effectively adding a new type of data on Ethereum layer one, which is transient. So right now when you put something on Ethereum, it stays there forever, but these layer twos only need the data to be there for a couple of weeks for the time, you know, that they would take for someone to verify that everything was fine. After that, they don't actually need it to be on Ethereum layer one. So today, all these layer twos pay for data, but they pay for like an infinite duration storage. And after the Denkun upgrade, they'll pay for, you know, about a couple of weeks of storage. And because that's much cheaper, then they can pass on all those cost savings to their users and just onboard a lot of new people and use cases where high transaction fees just don't work for them. Mm -hmm.